Hi and good morning. This is Eden Gordon Hill and this is Common Sense America. And this morning, it is Monday. It is the first day of the week as we head into March the 13th. We have a great week ahead of you and for you with amazing new guests. And I am so honored to introduce you to Nelson Robbins. You see right below, you can follow him on YouTube. But I also want you to consider this. This is going to be a very special interview as we head into Easter, as we talk about the resurrection, as we talk about Christ's death. Nelson Robbins is a truck driver from Ohio, and he talks about on his YouTube channel, hell, heaven, and what Jesus gave him. He is a warrior for Jesus Christ. And so, Nelson, I am so glad to have you here at this podcast. Thank you for being a special guest. And I'm thankful to my husband, who is behind the scenes, who connected with you through your YouTube videos as you are a truck driver and you stop and you do these videos and you share your testimony as you were on the road. And it really impacted my husband's faith. And then he started telling me about you. And I said, okay, let me listen. And then there were some, my husband said, no, I don't, I don't, I think it's too much for you when you talk about hell, when you talk a lot about hell. My husband knows how sensitive I am. So he said, here are ones that you can listen to and here and this, and I would recommend not listening to this one, but the impact that you are making and sharing your journey and sharing how you came to Christ and how you were just a follower for him. You've sold out everything to follow Christ and where you came from is so powerful. I also want to say this before I let you speak. I shared some of your story with some of co some college students and I shared some of the things that had impacted me and it kind of stunned them for a second about what you have gone through. For this, and then now giving up everything for the sake of Christ. So Nelson, I'm so thankful for you to be here at Common Sense America. Welcome and good morning to you. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me, first of all. My pleasure. My um, pleasure. Well, let me dive into this a little bit so you, you know we can get the most out of this time. Um, make a long, you, you know, to go into the story, you know, I was born into a household with you know divorce and all that i was i was in a demonic home per se and just grew up moving around and just got into a lot of different areas through moving uh i got left when i was 15 years old by my mother and you know and through the all the events taking place i was beaten a lot tortured and uh you know, I ended up in a demonic home, which, um, and when I say demonic, I mean demonic. I mean, it was it, tarot cards, re readings, witches, warlocks, just beyond demonic. But there's a time and a place for everything. And um, I always like to, you know, I don't like to skip through hell too fast, but I, <laughs> it's painful. It's very painful because I, I committed suicide four times. And called on God the first time and saying, God, if you're, if you're real, show me, show me you. And that's the first time I've ever entered into hell. And a lot of people say, you know, it's nonsense, uh, you know, but truly I say the only thing that saved me was saying, God, if you're real and calling on Jesus, you know, the other times mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, hell is real. I, I like to say all the time, if you look out your window, we're standing in the devil's playground. The Bible clearly speaks in the book of Job when Jesus is standing there and he asks the devil, "What took? where have you been? I've been walking to and fro, going up and forth. You know, he's speaking about he's walking the earth. He's coming from heaven back to, you know, to earth. We have to understand the devil's in control. And, and we can't be naive of thinking that the devil's not real if we believe in heaven. We can't believe in hell if we can't believe in God. Um, I never really disbelieved God because I, at a couple of videos that I've done, I've, I've also said, I hated God. I told him I hated him. And I know it's hard to hear it, but it's, you, you, you got to understand where I come from as a person. God to me wasn't love. I've been turned away from churches when I was a young boy and nobody would accept me and I was hungry. So you got to understand, I'm just giving you a little parts that you can understand who I was as a person. I'm a scared young 15 year old little boy. 
And to me, God was, hey, there was no love in God. Because if this church is, is a building, today I realize that churches are just a building because we are the body of church. I'm hooked to the vine of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if I'm staying hooked to them, I, I don't look at, I, I look at life a lot different. You know, I look at it as a fingernail has a purpose. It's hooked to my finger. Without my finger, the fingernail can't be there. So no matter where you are hooked to that vine of Jesus, we all have a purpose. And our purpose is to pick up our crosses daily and to do God's will, which is God's will is to speak of his son, which speaks of God. We are going to receive hate. We're going to have people doubt us. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people all the time when I talk to youth, I, I'm more with the youth because they're the most vulnerable ones. You know, see, I didn't grow up with these emotions and going through school because I finished eighth grade. I finally went back and got a GED. And, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of education. So some things are difficult for me still today, spelling. And uh, I have no problems telling people stuff because I don't give the devil ammo to come at me. Right. And right. It also, it also shows people that, wait a minute, God, God takes a nobody because the somebody's don't want to listen. Churches are spiritually asleep. That's why we're having these problems. We're allowing the devils to enter into churches, which I'm not going to go on a lot of it, but I, I have done a lot of things about transgenders in the confusion. That's just the devil. Yes. And, yes. And I yes. right. And I believe I got the rights to talk about this stuff because I lived in places that backs up why I can feel the way I feel about these things. I'm not coming against the people. They're confused. And it's spreading through there. We're allowing this nonsense. Somebody sent me a video and I just want to share this and it disturbs me. They're allowing transgender men to come into sex education. Yeah. And bring adult toys and lubrications and stuff and show these children and, and de demonstrate this. Now, I don't know how they're demonstrating. All. I, I was like furious at this point going. And then I mentioned out to the parents of this school and I said, listen, I don't want to hear you complaining later on on news is saying my children were raped. You're allowing this to happen. Right. We right. are to protect these children. If the parents won't do it, we need to stand up for this rights. Thank you. Thank you. And this is what God's calling us to do. You know, I think back even, I, I'm, and again, don't take me wrong, please. I'm just, this is just how I am. I, I don't sugarcoat stuff. I'm raw with it. And I believe people respect this more than anything. I don't take lightly war, but there is one war that I do because you people got spit on. You, you got, that was your welcome home. So I'm just saying, and again, I respect all war. I expect anybody that fights, the people fight now. But I really just want to do a quick shout out, if it's okay, to the Vietnam vets. Sure, please. I just want to say to you all, welcome home, because I know you never got a proper welcome home. I love you. I thank you for what you did. You fought a war that was useless, but you fought it. And I just want to say I appreciate it, and I welcome you home. Welcome home. Because oh, you wow. didn't properly get a, a proper welcome home. Instead, people spit at your shoes. I went back and I watched because my father was also in Vietnam. Okay. And um, I seen a note that he wrote one time. I was hated over there. I pulled bodies on top of me to, to survive. I came home and people spit on my shoes. And I don't know what that feeling's like, but I know a lot of other feelings. But, um, you know, I, I just want to say, I know there's a lot of emotions and, and the devil likes to get in people's heads. You did what you had to do to survive, the same as I did what I had to do through life to, to survive. So, anyways, I just no, wanted to say you. welcome. Thank you. And a welcome home. I mean, um, this, this show, everybody knows, is about God, country, and family. And as you can see proudly behind us is the flag. I, it is our, um, our family legacy of service to this nation. And um, so thank you for that. That means a lot to my audience and the show. Let me let's talk about something that you mentioned in your opening conversation. And that is, you know, the attacks that we see on the young hearts and the young minds of today. We know it's evil. We know it is from evil. We know it is not of God. And so many in these culture wars are so confused 
They are being told so many things on social media. They don't know whom to believe. They are being taught in the school systems. And you have a lot of different political figures fighting it, but then you have a lot of other political figures promoting it. Sure. So from your background, and this is where I want to go with this, from your background of growing up in a very um, dark home, and seeing what evil really looks like. What can you say to my audience out there? My audience is retirees, grandparents, moms and dads who are just trying to put food on the table. And, and so what can you say to them in regards to your faith journey, what you were surrounded by in that dark period of time to say, you guys, you know what? We need to be more vocal about what is happening in our school systems, whether it's a grandkid, a kid that you're mentoring, your own child, or something, something that or a concerned citizen for that matter. What can you, what warnings can you give to them? if they are not necessarily aware of that, because you just talked about the transgender and how evil it is. And looking at those pictures, they're evil in themselves. How can you not see evil there? I, I see a human who is very confused. I see a human who is struggling to understand who they are. I see a human who has been taken down a path that is not of God. God makes man and woman. And he makes them and he makes us in his own image. And that transgender is not of God. So talk right. to me, talk to me about that. Well, here's here's where I would go with this. Um, I think back as a child myself, and this in this is the best way that I could probably put this. I didn't really have anybody look over me saying, Don't do this, don't do that. Once my grandmother passed away, and I was still a young boy at that point. Um but here's the signs. Depression, the devil wants he wants to put our children in depression. Why? Because he wants to destroy. If he can't get to you, he's going to use love. God sent love. He sent Jesus to go to the cross. So naturally, Lucifer uses our children. Mm -hmm. What you got to look at is your if you do, even if you have grandchildren and your children are grown, watch your grandchildren. Watch what they're looking at. See, we, we put babysitters out there, and that's what the devil wants. He wants everything at their hand. The hush word, and I'm going to say it because I, I'm not afraid of what people are going to say, the COVID was all set up, and I'm not even going to go into all that, but we all have yes. our ways. Yes, of, yes. Uh, it was. It was. See, it was. See, Lucifer wants masks. He wants our mask on so we can't socialize with each other because we can't see emotions. It's like a text message. Someone takes a bunch of words wrong. I said, why are you upset? You don't know if they're upset. You, you're looking at words. Mm -hmm. But parents, you, you got to stand up. You got to rise up for your children right now. You, you got to look at these schools and what they're doing. We put people in office, but we don't stand up for it. The gay rallies go through there and they're, they're loud and noisy. I, I also watched a video where they're going down there and they're doing like a parade and they're throwing candy and toys and other things. And I'm going, hold on. I rewinded it. I'm looking at it again going, they got the float things going on and they're literally doing adult bedroom things right. out there in the public and people find this okay. And I'm like, where are we at with this? But then right. you wonder why, but the devil, he's clever, but we got to be a step ahead because Yes. We have the power and authority of Jesus Christ in us. Yes. Yes. But look at but look at this. I mean, here's the thing that that baffles my mind is where do we stop looking at this? We stop looking at what our children are doing. Is your child now being quiet when they're coming home from school? There's a sign right there. They're either being bullied or they've yes. been they've been uh assaulted. Assaulted. Right. Or they're in the, some kind of activity of drugs. You know, I tell people all the time, if your kids are watching magical shows like Harry Potter, stuff like that, that's the yeah. Yes. So now we got to go a step further. If you got grandchildren, when when my granddaughter lived with us, she'd go in her room, she she would play and stuff. I'd always listen. Right. If she's having a conversation that because, you know, the imaginary friends, but is it imaginary? What are they seeing? Right. You know. But you, here's here's it all there. We have to start looking at the surroundings. 
don't be afraid because I used to tell my kids all the time. I'd go in there and be like, let me see your phone. Dad, no, I paid the bill. Let me see your phone. I want to know what you're doing. I literally would go in there, look at the TVs, look at who they're playing online. If I would hear, I'd pull, I'd pull their headphones off, put it on. If I heard cussing or any kind of language or do you want to join this group? No, my son does not. Goodbye. Right. And that's how I was because I knew what, what awaits, but we're not, the devil wants us occupied. He wants us to stay away from our children and not pay attention to what they're doing. But how's he doing it? Well, think phones. about this. Through our phones. Right. He Technology, the devil gets it, but God gets glory through all of it. How's he getting it right now? Because you have this wonderful host here that's going, no, I'm going to stand up. I'm right. going to stand up. I'm going to get the right people on my show. I'm going to screen them because obviously yeah. you got to be even careful who you invite onto a channel these days because it yeah. could go total chaos. But how does Lucifer do this? It's simple. We're missing it. You look at Bruce Jenner. Now it's Caitlyn Jenner. He brought in this boom of it's okay. I actually sat down and watched this uh, nonsense, and I'm going to call it nonsense because it's exactly what it is. They recreated the Bible. God created man and man and woman and woman. God says this. No, God never said that. That's nonsense. Then you got our – I don't even really want to call him president because – He's the not. person in place running our country. Right. You look at the Pope goes up on Mount Sinai to sign a new Ten Commandments. I mean, people are watching this stuff and people thinking this is okay, but how does he get the youth? Well, here, here it is. You look at the rap stars. You look yeah. at the athletes. Right. What are they doing? What are they wearing? What are they? What are they representing? Promoting if we're into all this stuff, Nike shoes or all this stuff, your kids want it. The devil's using these authority figures, the Illuminati. You look at the events that just taken place with the Super Bowl and all yes. this nonsense. The Grammys yes. are dressed up like devils. They got half naked people on there. You can't even watch a TV show. I literally stop watching television all around. I mean, I, I watch because Windows. To our soul is our eyes. Right. And everything I hear on there is the F word, the GD word. When did yep. we start allowing this stuff? Right. Right. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. You know, we have to really start paying attention to our home. And, and the Lord Thank says, you. you must monitor your home. You must stop. We have control. You pay your bills at your home. Your children don't. I love my children. If today, my children really don't talk to me because of, uh, different reasons like I've put in other videos but um is it because very, because of what you are standing up for is it because of your faith right and my thing is is when I was a sinner and I was into the that hatred world they had no problems with me I start I when I received Christ like you said in the beginning of this and it took the crucifixion for me to actually see that. And it, it changed my life. I mean, it truly did. Everything I do, if I even think I offended someone, I'm going back to ask, please forgive me. For what? For this. Oh, I, I didn't take it that way, but I did. And I'm sorry, because I don't want anything to keep me out of at, from going to heaven and being with Jesus. Because just, just to give you a sight of them, and I know people have a hard time with this, but if you claim to be a Christian, you, this is going to be good news for you. The look yeah. in his eyes is like watching because I've been out on the ocean because I, I, you know, living down in Florida, the deep, the deepest I can look down in the water. It's like looking in his eyes, you get this warmth, like you just wanted to jump out of the boat and just run across water. Yeah. And his smile is like an eternity of peace and love. Yeah. He's just warmth He's like the best talking. Matter of fact, sometimes I would even tell him through prayer, like, Lord, you already know. And he tells me this all the time. Tell people this. And this is this is very important in prayer. Don't, don't, don't just go and use God like an ATM and Jesus like an ATM. I need, I want, I want. They already know our wants. It might not be good for you. So if you're praying, first of all, have a clean conscience. Yeah. But when you're praying, 
allow him to talk back. It's the same as we're doing here. I'm talking, she's talking, we're all communicating because you, if you want to have a one-sided relationship, then go look in the mirror and talk to yourself right. because that's right. all you're doing. Right. But we have to stand up. He's telling us to rise up. He's saying, you can hear me. All you got to do is listen to me. Yes. We can't go in there and ask, Lord, I need a billion dollars. I want to be a billionaire. Well, I, I, I use this with some transgenders and some people that uh, I talked to not too long ago in person. I actually ran into them and they said, I watched your video. I'm offended by that. And I said, well, I'm offended by what you're doing. Right. Because you're saying I can't talk about God. I'm offended by it. Why is, why is it you can dress and identify as this? I said, so then I want to identify as a billionaire. If I accept you, then I want your community to give me a billion dollars so I can identify as a billionaire. Right. You see what people they dressed in a, they didn't have no words for it. Of course they didn't. They don't I have couldn't. a reason for what they believe in. We have a reason for our faith. We can Absolutely. give a testament for our faith. They cannot because there's nothing for them to stand on. It is right. it is of the devil like you talked about. I want to ask you something before you go any further. I want to ask yeah. you about your observation of the churches. And I have talked about this briefly with other um, guests to the show and have just really noticed a significant decline in our churches. Even, I mean, and perhaps it was going on even before COVID. We didn't notice it until COVID actually happened. And then we saw even more of a significant decline in the churches. But whereas churches are no longer talking about the hard things and hell being one of the most mentioned topic in the Bible, they don't talk about it. They don't talk about the book of Revelations. They don't talk about the tribulation. They don't talk about any of that. And people are not aware. They're not prepared and how are they else going to know? And this is in the United States of America. So talk right. to me about you being on the road. You travel a lot as a truck driver. What are you seeing in the churches as the significant decline having to do with the culture wars? What are you seeing? Basically, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot what you said. See, the devil wants revelation taken out of the Bible itself, because revelation just means his time is done. Lucifer doesn't want us here. So naturally, he's putting his seeds inside these churches. The pastors mm -hmm. are so much, I mean, we got these big name evangelists that all you have to do is start looking at the bigger names. And they're, they're boastful about themselves. They're boastful about their books. Does not the Bible speak? They will become proud people. They will become lovers of money. They will become boastful, prideful. Look at some of these people. They're talking about their million dollar homes. But then yeah. you hear other ones saying, well, if you tithe to me, it's like getting a receipt. And then later on, when you need God for something, you can go to God and say, no, God, here's my receipt. I need this. You owe me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is nonsense. But we're allowing the pastors to stand up there week after week. And eventually, if I walked in the room every day, and I said the same thing to you, you're stupid, you're useless, you're worthless. And I said this every day. Eventually, you start believing it. We start believing what they're saying because, well, I don't want to look for another church. Well, maybe you don't have to. Maybe you need to pray that God opens back up the fire into this church. And it's the pastor's responsibility to shepherd us, to protect us. If he sees this nonsense coming into church, he's supposed to exit it out there if they're not willing to receive Jesus Christ. But we're doing the issue of everyone's welcome. Well, no, not really. I, I don't want to see the nonsense. You know, right. how how is it? Now, here's, here's where I go to the point going, even with transgenders and the gay rights and all that stuff. I'm not coming against what you what you want to do. But my thing is, if you're such against God, then right. why are you bringing your nonsense into God's church? But you don't right. want to hear us talk about it. It's like a double-edged sword here. Mm -hmm. But the pastors are talking. I, I had a pastor, and, I, and I, I guess this is a good way to bring this into it. I had a pastor once down in Florida tell me, he says, Nelson, Listen, it's an organization. I say, what? 
He said, it's an organization. I don't even, they give me a month's worth of sermons. Some of them, I, they'll give me a bunch of stuff and they'll say, break it up through the month because we don't have nothing else to give you. This church already did it. When you're done, send it back and we'll send it to another church. They're not even doing their notes. They're not even reading. They're not doing, these churches are passing on teachings. And I'm going, where's the prayer at? Where is you right. sitting down, open the book? I don't have to. It's already done for me. I just got to put my little twist on it. And everybody's happy. The numbers are good. I just got to keep bringing people in and bringing the tithe. And that's, I mean, have you noticed going into churches, most of it is these rock star. It's a show. A show. It's, a, it's a performance. It's a performance. Right. Yeah, it's not what I remember as church growing up in a small country church. It's not Wednesday Bible meetings or prayer meetings. It's not the Sunday evening services. It is now, it is it is praise and worship services, but then to the extent of, I love praise and worship services, don't get me wrong. But when you go into some of the churches, it is all about the performance versus what the meat of a message is. It's not necessarily about scripture. It's more about that aspect of who, what's the newest song and what's the greater performance. And, you know, one thing I will give an example on is, is this, and I don't want to come across as a hypocrite, but here's where I'm going with this elevation out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I remember it when it first started out. It was a small church and it continued to grow. And what I respected about it at that time period was they were really wanting to engage the culture and meeting people for where they were, whether they were struggling in their faith, learning about new faith, every aspect. And then fast forward to current, they have amazing music. Now, is all of it focused on God and Christ? I'm not sure. I think some of it is, but some of it's not. Right. And that's where and that's where I challenge a lot of the mega churches like them. Is it more of a cult? Or is it more focused on faith itself? And that's where I get concerned. So I could sit here and work all day and listen to my praise and worship music because I know my heart is in that right place. But right. for a lot of people going to church on Sundays, is it checking the box? All right, I did mm -hmm. it. You know, like right. a lot of like a lot of Catholics, and I'm not criticizing the Catholic faith, but a lot of them are Easter, Christmas type. Uh, it's a type of faith. Now, I know a lot of Catholics who are Christians. My husband is one of them. I have learned a lot about the Catholic faith. It is the international faith, if you will, of history of, of years and years and decades and, and centuries. But I also say to those people, are we a nation now? of those who are checking the box saying we did it we went to church we took our communion we come home and then we continue going on about our daily life and our daily work and it's all about me me and me it's not about putting christ first in everything we do and say whether it's me putting christ before this podcast before my media business before my marriage and i have waken up to that reality growing up in a very strong christian protestant home that I need to put my husband first. I put God first, husband, and then my work. Family right. and my husband and our relationship with Christ has to be at the forefront for everything else to fall into place. And right. I say, and I say that to so many people out there who are maybe tuning in and who are listening to this. But I want to, I want to let's take it back to what Jesus gave you. Because when I have people tuning into this podcast at Common Sense America, they can go over to your YouTube channel. You have two of them. And they can see all the different clips that you have done while you're on the road as a truck driver, but also when you're from home. And you were talking, you were thinking about doing something more focused on the resurrection as we get closer to Easter. But I also want to talk about you are a warrior for Christ Jesus. And a lot of people are afraid to say that. So let's talk about what did Jesus give you? And as and now you are this warrior for him. Talk to me about the beautiful aspects of that. Okay. Well, you know, my thing was I I never try to please man because man to me growing up was evil and it was somebody that took advantage of you over over compensated you and and just 
tore you apart basically so knowing the devil even in a time i mean you you have to realize if you're following the devil's pathway you're serving him Right. If you're serving God, you're serving God. The Bible clearly states we can't be on both sides of the, you know, you can't serve two masters. Right. What I tell the youth is this, you know, and youth is youth. It could be somebody from five years old to 90 years old. It, youth is here. I tell people in prison, I, I you, you went in there a couple of times and told uh, inmates and stuff. And I said, listen, when you get locked in here, you're locked in prison. If you concentrate on the outside and what your life was or what it can be, you can escape what's going on in here. Don't, don't allow it to take over you. Some of these people are never going to get out of there. Some of these people are never going to get out of here. But what Christ did for me was he showed me little by little. And I'm able to see things in the spiritual realm. I'm able to go into areas of life and I go, he did this one event and, and I, I, tell, I don't want to give a lot of it away because I, I want you to actually hear the whole part of it. Sure. I told him one day in prayer and I said, Lord, I, you know, I follow you faithfully. You know, I don't want to go back to hell. I know hell's real and I know what goes on there. And I don't want that. I've su if you suffered enough here on earth and you think, man, I can't deal with this. We got to give it your concerns to him. First of all, you know, none of us can save you. We can just lead you to that pathway. It's up to you to accept Jesus Christ in your life. I accepted Jesus, but I didn't really accept him. You know, I held a pen in my hand and I, and I was always trying to write my own chapters. And the Lord said, when are you going to give that pen back to my father and let him do it? How's it working out for you? When he said that, I'm like, yeah, right. It's not working out. I'm a mess. I'm constantly worried about stuff. I'm worried about bills. I'm working overtime. I'm working at two jobs now. I'm trying to me, 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 me. Well, he told me one day, he says, you know what the problem is with you? It's like saying I. And I was like, what's wrong with that? He goes, because if you don't put the am behind the I, you're yeah. never going to have me. He took me in and I said, Lord, he goes, what's it going to take? And I was like, Lord, you know. He goes, no, again. It's a two-way conversation. I said, okay, Lord, show me the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you what, people, it is, and I literally, and I know she's going to have me back on to do this for you. I, I, I can feel it in my spirit. I know for 100% when you hear this, if it don't bring tears to you, I don't think anything will, because I will go into detail exactly when I finally, and I'm talking, I've, started following Christ in 2014. So it took me many years to get to, to that point to trust him. Right. It took me about 2017, 2016, going into 2017 for me to accept God because I thought God was still this hateful person. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to walk me that many years to get me. That's how stubborn I am. I, I tell people I'm like a mule. I mean, it's like I had to have the facts, and this is what I'm giving you right now is the facts. When he showed me that, literally, I took about three days, and I really it was on a it was on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, and I really didn't speak much to anybody. I just kind of stayed to myself in prayer. It was the most changing event, and I'm not talking about just seeing something on TV. I'm talking. He led me from the, from what he, when he was arrested to the beating, to the crucifixion, why they moved his cross out. I don't know if you ever really looked at Jesus's cross, but you got the two thieves and you got Jesus's cross in the front. There's right. a reason for that. There's a right. total reason and it's going to blow your mind. But then it goes into the grave. What he took on when the darkness came and the veil was torn, right. it took on a meaning. Mm hmm what he did in the grave when he came out of the grave, even going into hell. Now gather, he's still beaten and battered because remember when he, when they came to him, he said, don't cling to me. I've yet not been back to be made new. Right. It changed my life. And I'm telling you, there's still times that I even telling people this, it shakes me up because I can still visually see how much Jesus loved us. Mm -hmm. And the fact when he was on the cross and I'm looking up and I will give you this because it's going to give you exactly 
I looked up at that cross and I looked up at this man and I seen him looking down and he said, I love you, Nelson. You is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. The same as I, and each person that looks up at the cross. See, when I surrendered my life that day to him, I said, Lord, you got to put me on the cross with you. You got to hold my hands up on that cross because if you went through that with me, then I want you to be in me. I want the Father Spirit, and I'm sorry for anything that if I wrongfully ever came against the Father. And he told me, he says, you know, all the times you were mad at my father and yelling at him, you still had communication with him, and he was okay. You know, we look at God sometimes as this mean guy with a big beard sitting on a throne holding yeah. a magnifying glass going, I'm going to spite you and throw you into hell. God doesn't want that. He wants us saved. But sometimes we've got to hear things that's difficult for us to hear, but it's up to you to believe it or not. You know, yeah. I know Christ lives in me. I don't have to speak to Christ. I got to show him. That's the important you know, part. If you're falling down, I tell some people, you get caught up in a tornado, in a hurricane all at once. But when you fall out of that tornado and the water's pushing you and dragging you down into that rocks, yeah. I'm going to be the one that's going to turn around and come and help you up. I'm yeah. going to be the one that's going to help you carry that cross and dust you off because we're not doing that. We're walking away from people. And it's sad, but it's, I, I, my heart goes out. I mean, look, you reached out to me and look how long it took me to get back the devil to stop hacking stuff. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you didn't give up. You yeah. didn't give up. That's the, yeah. that's the main part. And, and, and I, I, I want your followers to know you never gave up. You yeah. stay patient and I, I, I put together a, a video. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. Maybe we could do it on here. It's up to you. God, the father told me, I'm going to give you something. And I want you to re replay this for people. Okay. And I said, okay, when do you want me to do it? He says, the right person's going to come and I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. He gave me his timing why we are so confused and why we react before we come to prayer. And it's, it's about 20 minutes. I would say to actually do it all to, to give it the best way to do it. Uh -huh. It's amazing. And I live by God's timing today. I live by the love of Jesus Christ and I let them shine through me. I don't have to ever speak to a sinner. I just, they, they watch us. The same yes, as your children do. watch you growing up. Yes. It's, yes. It's that simple. Yes. Yeah, they do watch you. And, you know, I, I've i noticed in my journey of faith from as a child of knowing Christ Jesus as my Savior to now, years later, and walking in faith in all the different journeys the Lord had for me and looking back on that time in the blink of an eye and how quickly it's gone by, knowing that he was present in every aspect of my being. And there's something very powerful to that. But also having people say to me privately, you, you exude Jesus, you just radiate Christ. And that means a lot to me because I know it's him and it's not me. I know it's him and not me. So let's talk about this. I do want to do that 20 minute thing, but I would like to save it for the next segment that we do because we have a lot more to talk sure. about. Is that okay with you? Oh, that's fine. Okay. God's okay. timing. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It still is. Um, so I want to also talk to you. We have about, let's see, we're at the 40 minute mark. So I want to go about uh, five or seven minutes longer and see how much we can get in. So right. talk to me more about this. I want to, you've talked to me what Jesus has given you. You talked to me about uh, and I see you as this warrior for Christ Jesus, as you were on the road and it took, it, it took you that long to really understand what, uh, you know, God, the father was really trying to impact you with I, something that you said to my husband and I, the other night, when we were on the phone, you have received a lot of hate mail, a lot of backlash. You, your social media was hijacked. And, you know, in many ways, I say it's probably was censored, if you will, uh, because you were speaking truth. Talk to me about some of the things that have happened in that space. Why were people so hateful to you and what has kept you going because to get to come on that other side? 
Well, it, it, the best part of it is, is some people, you know, the, the Lord speaks the best. You know, he says, I didn't come for the ones that, that weren't sick. I come for the sick. Uh, he came for the sinners and the people that are well-educated. And I'm not taking anything about, away from education. Uh, you know, I've had pastors say this and that. I said, okay, well, show me in the church where Jesus sent his disciples to go to church to learn. They didn't. They learned by him, by following him. Yeah. And that's where we are to do. My thing is we don't understand it. You know, we, our culture, we're, we're designed, if we can see it, feel it, touch it, we believe it. For someone to come up to you and go, this is nonsense. You know, what you speak, it's not biblical. And I said, yeah, surely you want the Bible? Well, you don't give scripture. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I said, but I give you the book. Yeah, it's not know. up to me to get you to open the book. It's up to you to open it. I, I'm not coming against the, the audio. I'm not coming against the apps. But I say to truly understand God's living word is to hold it, to yes. hold the book. People come out of hate because they're scared. And I'm sorry, but it, it's the truth. You're scared because you know hell exists. You don't want to be told that you're going to hell. Try walking in a bar and tell somebody they're alcoholic. You right. not going to work. But I will tell you. I'm going in there to witness. No, you're not, because you go in there and sit long enough, you become like whatever you sit with mm. is why we have to move away from things. Preach it, go, and let God. He told me once, he says, Nelson, when the haters come at you, remember, I might call you to plow the field today. Tomorrow, I might call you to plant the seed. Mm -hmm. The third day, I might call you to cover up the seeds. And all these hate things that come at us, I said, but God, I'm human. He says, yes, but I'm the water. I will water this crop if it deserves to be watered. You let me deal with it. I don't need you to go into judgment. I don't need you to go into hate. He says, go stand with my son. And the Lord's standing in this waterfall of water that's flowing fast. He's standing on a rock, and he says, stand, my child, with me. I said, Lord, I'm going to fall, and I'm going to be wiped away from this water. He says, no, you won't. These are all the negative comments. Now wait a few minutes. It becomes calm. See, what they do to me or anybody else that's on here speaking of this, you're doing it to Jesus and God above me. Yeah. So I'm at peace because yeah. I don't have to deal with you. Yeah. I'm not going to allow you to attack other people that come on there and leave comments negative against someone else because you have no rights. You know, I have the rights to get it off there so nobody has to read it or that person because right. they're just trying to learn. Right. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. You know, it's like your hate is your hate. I've had so much hate over the years. It, it, I got thick skin, I guess. I mean, I've been told people want me to die and this and that. I'm like, well, that's your opinion. You have an opinion tomorrow. You're going to go out. You're going to decide what you're going to do Tuesday morning, whether you get up and start with Christ. I'm not bragging or boasting on myself, but I'm just saying I get up extra early to spend that time because before – I even step out of my bed. I say, Lord, I want the devil to fill me. Get up and get ready to start my day. I'm going to get my coffee. I'm going to drink a cup of coffee and then I'm coming to prayer because I don't want no distractions in my life. You, yeah. Sometimes you got to take the distractions out of your time. Yes, yes, yes. No, I completely agree with you. I always say, I, I think I got this quote from an old friend of mine years ago. You know, she always said, as soon as your feet hit the ground, make sure you're, you know, you're scaring the devil. And you know what, as soon as we hit the ground, the devil's like, okay, man, I got to work overtime. You are a pain in the butt. You are a nuisance. And that's exactly, that's exactly the mentality we need to have. And it, going back to what you said up here, it is capturing every thought captive. For those who struggle with depression, for those who are struggling with their identity, for those who are struggling with what is next for them and the uncertainties of life, it is a thought life and having the power over our thoughts and allowing Christ to transcend into our hearts and our minds and not allowing our time to be usurped from, you know, with, with social media, with the distractions with the jealousy with those who are trying to attack us it, just like you you said you have a lot of haters out there i 
don't, you know, I will say this. I have definitely seen over the years where people will try and steal from me with all the work that I have done. And I, we, that's where we need to really stand up for what we are doing in our faith for such a time as this. So on that note, I am so thankful that we had Nelson Robbins, What Jesus Gave Me, A Warrior for Jesus, be a part of this podcast here at Common Sense America. We are going to bring him back as we head into Resurrection Sunday, as we head into the Easter holiday to celebrate not bunnies, not candy, not little carrots that go with bunnies, but celebrating Christ's death and resurrection for us. So I am so thankful for all of those who have supported this podcast and continue to do so here at Common Sense America. And we will be bringing Nelson Robbins back to the show in a couple weeks as we head into Easter Sunday. Until then, be strong, be courageous, and take every thought captive. Thank you.